Hello there, I'm Mikko from the Body of Christ and welcome to another Leadership Reflection. Today our topic is the IPO process. And if that doesn't say anything to you, don't worry, we'll cover it a little bit. But hopefully you are a little bit aware of that already. So what is IPO? IPO stands for Issues and Problems. So Issues and Problems turned into opportunities in a team setting. So today we'll be covering a little bit of how that process looks like in practice and um, how it sequences. So what what phases come after each other and how the system functions together. And uh, it would help if you watch the videos about process first. So that is about asking questions, about listening, about creating a safe harbor, because that is the um, that is kind of the how or the uh, and also covers some basic principles behind this process. But let's dive into how this looks like and how this can help you and your organization. So, like I mentioned, IPO happens within a team setting. So right now we'll be assuming that you are a team leader and you have a team working with you. And uh, this is very related to the so-called uh, leadership uh, leadership job description. Yeah, that it is. And um, this same kind of function you, we are discovering here works in every team downline. So these Every one of your team members represents a team leader in another table. And uh, that process is like uh, in, in software development, we use to work recursion. So this is like a recursive algorithm in leadership. So whatever happens here, you can apply the same function down line in the organization chart. So your organization has teams of different levels but everyone follows the same process. So you can apply this IPO process uh, independent of at which level of organization we are dealing with. Maybe some ex exceptions for the lowest level at the moment, as well as for the highest level at the moment. But right now we'll be focusing on the middle level, so to speak, because that really uh, is like, what, 90% of your organization. So plus it. most people are going to target that anyway. So that's where we're going. And the basic process behind the IPO is that first you acquire data from your team. So in, in this Maximum CEO stuff, we say that you take the pulse. So you have this vision in mind of where you're going, but you need data real life data of where you're actually going at the moment. Are you going here? Are you going here? Are you on target at the moment? So that's why your team brings data to the table. And last time we talked about honesty. And here it is extremely important that the data you receive here is honest, transparent, and cohesive. And, you know, is the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth kind of thing, you know? Because otherwise, this whole process has faulty input. And like a function that receives faulty input, you can expect it to get faulty output as well. But anyway, you start with the facts. So your team brings the facts to the table. That could be like, hey, how is your team doing with that goal we set up last week? Or, or like, are there any issues come up during this week and so on and so forth? And they might report that, yeah, we're, we are on target here. Oh, we actually experienced this big problem here. Um, but we have this plan for overcoming that problem or um, something that's not fully surfaced yet, but you might identify, hey, there's actually like a behavior problem, for example, that there seems to be a dispute between these team members. And if not dealt with, that can lead to damaging results, so you deal with that. That would be your fact. Uh, but anyway, you identify the fact, first of all, and those represent issues. And then the next phase, so the first phase is face the facts. 
The next phase is prioritize the facts. So, for example, if this team member comes here that we have this huge problem, um, we made this contract that's we don't have the resources for, for example, or like we don't have the talent for this contract, but we need it. So they say we need help here, or we need to do something. So you as the leader take that, okay, that seems like a very major issue. And then you ensure that that issue becomes the issue of the whole thing. Because if it's only this person is this person's issue or your issue, there's more, not much you can do alone to it. But if you demonstrate that, okay, here's what this issue represents, here's what it will cause if it's not dealt with and it's actually going to affect you and you as well and, you know, it can lead to this whole project terminating and whatever. But kind of bringing the whole team into the, into the problem, so to speak, making it the whole team's problem instead of just someone's problem. So now the team is focused on, on this goal and you brought it up into the table, so to speak. Next phase is to uh, get the wisdom for this uh, issue and develop uh, a plan to solve it. But the thing is, we don't do that in this table because the wisdom is in these tables. It is the wisdom is at the lowest levels of the organizations. Those are the wisest people, in my opinion. So what needs to happen in order to come up with a very good plan is that you need to delegate that problem to hey, you and your team come up with a plan for this this uh, problem and let's review that plan next week. So get it ready for next week. So this person is like, okay. That's it. That is my direction now. So you set the direction, do this, get this done by the, this time and so on and so forth and acquire commitment for that direction. And he goes into the, his team and he's like, hey, we received this problem. I need your wisdom and we need to talk about this. So downline, they will bring out their wisdom and their data, how to bring, bring a, a solution into that problem. And even here, the the issue can be delegated over here with additional wisdom acquired from these tables and so forth. And the issue gets to that uh, lowest level where the wisdom is, basically. And now they have a have a issue. And, you know, it might be delegated to multiple tables. You know, you take part care of this part, you take care of this part, depending on the size of the issue and the specialties of the teams and so on and so forth. But... Basically, uh, what happens in this kind of tree-like structure, you distribute the issue into in like reasonable size chunks into the organization, so that the best vision of the organization is resolving that issue. And they each have a goal. You need to come up with a plan, a provable plan by this and this time. So that's the downline process so that this thing goes downline the directives or the problems go downline in order to be solved but what comes up let's say next week is the answers the solutions the plans the proposals the ideas the supreme methods of how to turn this issue into an actual victory an actual opportunity to grow even more but how does how does that look like Let's start with the lowest low here. Uh, and it doesn't matter if it's the lowest or semi or whatever. It's the same process anyway. So this guy here is like, hey, uh, my team came up with this plan and I think it would work. And this leader is like, okay, what do you think about it, team? You know, these give, up their, these give their input. Have you thought about this? Well, we tried to do it last time and it kind of failed. Um, you know, have you considered about this fact, about this area that we are more, you know, equipped in? So the leader might, might be like, hey, those are valid um, concerns. You need to think about this a bit more and come back next week with an upgraded plan. It's like, okay, I'll come back next week. 
So we get the plan kind of reiteration process until it's it's good enough for this level. And when, it, when the plan is good enough that it can be approved by this leader, he adds the icing on the cake, so to speak, may add some little things here and there, but it's his team's plan, really. And he comes here to this table and presents his plan. Hey, my team came up with this plan and, you know, we think this might solve the issue. Same process as happened here. And now it's this leader's responsibility to make sure that that plan is approvable for his kind of uh, directive that he received and his level of operation. And these, these teams also give their input. Have you considered this? I think this might be a good addition and so on and so forth. So again, it goes through an iteration of approvals or rejections. And then finally it arrives to that kind of highest level uh, table where that issue originated from. So now same thing, I came up, uh, my team came up with this plan and this could solve the problem. And again, the leader either approves it or rejects it. And if he rejects it, he shows why and what should be done better. And uh, like helping them to make better decisions in the future, because that help then, of course, uh, <coughs> affects the whole downline. Oh, we actually shouldn't have done that way. We need to do this way from this point on, you know, so it's also training at the same time. But, um, finally we get an approved plan and of course, it might be that this leader also has to present that plan and get, get an approval from his leader, uh, if it's big enough, but if it's, you know, if it's a matter of this area here or this capacity, then he can be like, yes, that's good. Do it. And then the team continues with the execution again, directives go down and results, answers, ideas, wisdom come up. And this is like. I think this is a really good system just because of this, that, that wisdom is here where most of the people are. That's like, you respect that and get the wisdom from there, but you help them become the best by providing leadership, providing, facilitating that wisdom, providing direction. And this guy handles the kind of the vision, the macro level things. Anyway, might not have been very clear, but, but I find it better than this top-down mentality that I tell you what to do, I tell you what to think, go there, do this, don't think, just do it, you know, this sort of satanistic type of leadership, really. But, um, but here, this brings out uh, the value of the people and the wisdom of the people in the organization while helping them build something really great. But uh, that's the IPO process uh, connected with the leadership job description idea. And hopefully you can see why this might be a very potential thing, especially I think because of this recursion, uh, algorithm or recursive algorithm here, because it's so simple, but you can use it on any level of the organization. Next, uh, we will cover in a little bit more detail why we don't do problem solving within these meetings. And I'll see you there.